So you think you need a lot of protein. That's what I wanted to talk about in this video. The topic of protein is a very divisive one. The comment section when I talk about protein gets very um, conflicting. There's a lot of conflicting information out there, especially if you're somebody who likes Barnard, who likes Pritikin, who Pritikin in this book, that book, and then, or McDougal. I don't actually have any McDougals uh, other than that in, in physical form. Pritikin was really against protein. Barnard seems to be really against it, and so was McDougal. And you have to look at the people who are pushing protein, how big their channels are, who's behind them, and a lot of other things. And I'm not saying in this video at any point that we don't need protein. We need protein, we're built of protein. It builds the entire person that we are. However, if you really look at our actual need for protein, it's very minimal. Uh, you know, the FDA used to be, or the RDA used to be like 55 grams or something like that. Uh, I don't know where it's at right now. It's kind of um, all over the place. Even this 2000 calorie diet thing is a little off because if you really look at the recommendations back in the day, back when people are skinny and healthy, the uh, recommendations for females was around 3,000. The recommendations for males was around 3,500. So it was completely different. And why is that? And why is it that the people who preach protein the most seem to be like chiropractors and just different random doctors that really don't have much to do with diet? They just have, you know, a channel they seem to be uh, paid by you know other uh, other places. The huge protein thing came about back in the day when farmers were sifting out the whey and the uh, casein casein from the milk, right? And they're like, well, we got all this byproduct, and they were feeding it to animals, livestock, to make them fatter. Well, what was happening was these animals were getting too fat. <laughs> It's the same thing with the seed oils. The seed oils, again, was to feed livestock and the livestock was getting too fat. So they're like, well, we've got all this stuff. Why don't we make it look essential? You're not getting enough protein. We'll market it. It's the same thing with the bone broth and collagen. I mean, if, if taking collagen made any difference then you know, or like rebuilt your collagen, then why couldn't a bald person eat hair? right to regrow hair it just doesn't make any sense it's marketing 101 it's kind of like um the thing that i put on my instagram stories the other day about soap nobody wanted soap back in the 1920s and all of a sudden procter and gamble hired this genius propagandist and he started pumping out that everybody needs soap and all of a sudden Soap is like this huge industry, billion dollar, probably trillion dollar if you look at the entire world, uh, industry, right? It's an industry and you are feeding into these propagandists of these industries who are looking to get rid of stuff that they used to just throw out and they're like, wait a minute, let's uh, market this. So it's, it's, it's no different than the food colors like the tartrazine or whatever it's called. It, it used to be put in a tar and then the, the, they figured out how to put it into the food sources. And so now, it's just, it's, 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 if you believe that tartrazine is bad for you, why do you believe eating excess protein is good for you? And somebody came onto my channel the other day and is like, well, as you age, you need more protein. Why? You're not growing any. <laughs> like, you're, yes, sure, your protein is denaturing probably more just because of the diet, the crazy amounts of prescription drugs people are on, the milk, everything that people are eating. And ironically, protein, fat, and all this stuff is actually making it so you age quicker because it's toxic at a level more than you need. So your body's going to have more toxins in it and it's going to start pulling from the bones because the bones are ex extremely alkaline and the uh, byproduct from excess protein and excess fat is extremely acid. So it has to take extremely alkaline and mix it with extremely acid to neutralize it so it doesn't kill you because if your blood, uh, if your blood goes much past, I think it's 7.33, you're dead. There's no like, there's no like compromise here. You're just, you're dead. And so it has to keep that balance. And the more and more and more and more it keeps that balance, the more water you're losing, 
the more uh, bone mass you're losing, the more teeth mass you're losing, the more everything, and you start shrinking, shrinking, and you start coming down like this because you are missing your structure. Your structure is gone. And that is what's happening. So th the idea that you would need more protein is absolutely crazy. It's crazy because the excess protein is causing more and more osteoporosis. You know, I forgot to look it up. <clears throat> One second. Okay, so I just looked up. Since 1980, has protein increased? There has been a significant increase in the average protein intake per person globally. What has also increased globally? The intake of prescription drugs. Why? Because it is not good for us. The same way the sugar increase or, uh, uh, has decreased, protein has increased. And did we have a lot of diseases when there was a lot of sugar in the diet? No. But do we have a lot of diseases in the, in, with the protein in the diet? Yes. Why? Because it's extremely toxic. If you have too much sugar, I'm not talking about donuts here that are 75, 80% fat. I'm talking about straight up sugar, like a cube of sugar, straight up. If you have excess of that, your body is going to do a few things. It's going to heat up. It's going to get jittery. It's going to tell you to go for a walk. It's going to get really hot. It's going to do a few things. Very unlikely to turn it into fat. Uh, they did a study with uh, women. They added 1,500 calories a day of just pure sugar in the form of candies and in the form of just straight sugar. And these women over a three month period at most, at the absolute most, gained a third a pound of fat in the entire three months. So the idea that your body's gonna turn excess sugar or whatever that might be for you into a lot of fat is just fallacy. It might turn it into water weight just because it doesn't know where to store it. And then once you get rid of it, it'll go away. And largely, a lot of that comes from hormone issues uh, lack of hormones. And that's another thing. Protein actually destroys your hormones overall. And, you know, Chris, uh, Christopher Walker did a couple of videos about that. Maybe I'll do a reaction video to that because I don't feel like putting an entire video together for it. But protein overall is not what you want it to be. You know, or not, not, it's not what you think it is. It is very toxic. And look at, and look at what has happened to the health of the population since we started adding more and more protein into it, it has gone down, 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 down. What has, you know, what has gotten better by adding more protein into the diet? Nothing that I can think of. Now, we're gonna have the carnivore keto people coming in here and say, well, it cured me of everything. It didn't. It's so much extra work on your body that your body no longer has time to work on other things that are going wrong with the body so you think you've cured yourself. You're getting skinnier because your body is using all of its water weight, it's using all of its bone mass to neutralize the amount of toxins that is being added into your body. Arnold Eric talked about that. And that is another thing that I wanted to talk about as well. Why is it that the doctor that I've covered here, uh, I forget what his name, I think his name was Matthew something. If I think about it, I'll uh, link the first video that I did of him up here. Why is it all of these doctors that are talking about low protein and healing people are the ones that have these random accidents, you know, like car accident, slips in the shoes, or just whatever random thing might happen to these people. Why is it that these, none of the keto carnivore people have this? And I'm sure there probably is one because, you know, the, the keyboard warriors are going to come down in the comments section and tell me how well, blah, 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 this happened to them. But overall, the people like uh, Gerson, Gerson Therapy, I think he was a doctor. Um, his wife, I believe, just passed or still alive, but she's like 100 something. But they were after him. They tried to poison him once. They, he figured it out. They poisoned him a second time. He didn't figure it out and he's gone. Why is it that these people who are against excess protein are always finding themselves in accidents or dying young or whatever it is? And the ones who are pushing the protein thing are just, they look terrible, but they live to like normal ages. Why is that? Really think about this. And the idea that you need excess protein uh, as you age is, is absolutely ridiculous. And people act like it's a known fact. People act like you can get energy from protein, which is this 
that doesn't that chemically doesn't even make any sense and that leaves me with my last thing that I'm going to say in this video is the guy that I just referenced I think of his name was Matt again if I remembered I'd linked it up uh, there in the video he did experiments extensive experiments on the idea that fasting um, gives you longevity that uh, you get a longer life have less disease or whatever from fasting not having as much food because there was an experiment done where they starved mice and rats and humans or whatever and the longevity uh, increased right then they did he did an experiment that found that the reason that that happened was because protein wasn't in their diet and needless to say the ones that were uh, fasting all the time and weren't eating that much were miserable yeah they lived longer but they were absolutely miserable the ones who didn't have protein in their diet, a high, you know, like high protein or protein at all, actually lived longer than the ones that were on the starvation, but actually had a good quality of life. And he kept proving that protein was the reason for these diseases and everything happening to these, uh, these animals and people that were in these studies. And all of a sudden he finds himself in a car accident and he's no longer on the planet because they don't want that getting out there. So those of you who think that you need more protein in your diet, it's just not true. Yes, of course, we're built from protein. We are, it, but you don't actually need that much protein. I think it's like a third, it's like a third of a gram. It's a really small amount that's needed to build one pound of muscle. I mean, it's very little amount because your muscles are actually glycogen storage units, basically. They're, like if you can imagine, like a storage unit, everybody's getting them now because they buy too much stuff and they can't even fit it in their houses anymore and they got storage units. I'm like, stop buying stuff. Uh, you know, these storage units that you think of when you're passing them, this is literally what a muscle is, is a glycogen storage unit. And so the more muscle you have, the more glycogen, glycogen you store. And that's, you know, what, you know, like the pump and everything like that when you go working out. You don't need as much protein as you think you do. And the reason I'm talking about this is because I was under that uh, illusion years ago that I needed too much protein. And it ended up really screwing up my liver, really screwing up my kidneys. I was over 400 pounds at one point because... I just thought the protein was the, the be all end all and it took me almost a decade to get to this point. So the people who are losing all this weight, everybody has lost 70 pounds. I don't know what it is with that magical 70 pounds. As soon as you put like, I lost 70 pounds, like people flock to your video like crazy. It's just the algorithm likes to push that, push that number. But they've only been on it for X amount of years. At some point, once your liver can't handle it anymore, the, the, the effects, the terrible effects of excess protein are gonna start showing themselves. For me, it was uh, balding, not being able to sleep, and then smelling like ammonia, throwing up stomach acid, uh, severe back pain. I remember there was one time I was on the ground, I was trying to roll around, nobody was awake, it was like three o'clock in the morning, and I'm rolling around on the ground trying to get some relief and when i went to get up i realized that i couldn't my back hurt so bad that i couldn't actually it took me an hour i believe to get off the ground not that anybody was in the house was going to be able to, to, to help me because i was just so big at that point but it was it was a very scary thing and so this is what protein eventually does to you so the idea that you need more protein or that you got energy from it like it's it it's highly thermogenic but it, it's it's not an energy like your body you your body doesn't utilize protein in any energy cycle at, at all it utilizes carbs and it utilizes fat depending on what level of activity that you're using high 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 level of activity uses mostly carbohydrates because they burn really hot and low activity burns fat because it burns really low and, and slow. It doesn't burn protein for this at all. Now, it will start getting rid of protein as you start losing weight because you don't need as much muscle to move yourself around if you're not working out. But as far as using it for energy, no, it doesn't do that. That's just not a thing. <laughs> it's just not a thing. So, do you need a lot of protein? No. You don't, you just don't need a lot of protein. And even me, who's not trying to get much protein because when I have too much, I start smelling like ammonia again. 
I still usually have over 100 grams a day just off potatoes, rice, and vegetables and fruit. I mean, I can't imagine needing any more than that, really. So that is my video. I think the last thing I will say, even though I've tried to end this video, is in the con study, I know there was only two people, two, but they wanted to see, can, can you get the actual nitrogen levels, which is protein that you need from just potatoes alone? And the answer to that question was yes. So these two athletes got all their protein requirements from potatoes. And that's why uh, if this Mars thing is real, like going to Mars, they're literally just going to be bringing potatoes because it's got everything you need. I'm sure there's some vitamins in there because the vitamin warriors are gonna come on here that it's not in there, blah, 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 blah. But they didn't add any vitamins or anything to this con study whatsoever. They just had protein and butter. And that was it. So that's my video. Uh, I can't think of anything else to say. It's just this protein myth is just, it's a propaganda ad they needed originally to get rid of casein and whey they started turning it into shakes and then they're like wait a minute and then you know everybody you know all the scientists know that your body is going to dump weight really quick if you're on a high protein diet why because you're poisoning yourself and when you're poisoning yourself your body has to get rid of water and bone mass to neutralize that otherwise you die so you're really just keeping yourself sick but you don't think you're sick because your symptoms are gone, but the symptoms have only gone because you are so sick that your body doesn't have a chance to actually cure what's actually going on. Arnold Eret talked about this at length. Other doctors have talked about this at length. And every single one of these doctors have talked about this have had random accidents and are no longer, no longer here. So I find that to be very suspicious. Anyways, that's my video. Comments, questions down below like always. Like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one.